Now recognize myself for five minutes of question. First, I'd like to start with Mr. Mays. Um, you mentioned, I think, three um, sort of avenues of approach, or to, so to speak, use a military term, um, through which you guys are working on school safety, and you uh, you talk specifically about response and training. Can you describe some of the the training that you're talking about and the net effect and uh, where DHS and the federal government are assisting in that area? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the question. Um, we, we learned as a nation, we learned after the Uvalde, Texas school shooting what a, what a bad response looked like. And we, we, know, <clears throat> we know from these shootings that, that the law enforcement needs to respond and go into the school instant, uh, immediately and stop the killing, right? Um, we saw in Nashville at the Covenant School shooting, the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department officers went in immediately and it was, it was interesting for me to, to find out that most of those officers did not know each other and had never trained together, but yet their training in the police department under Chief Drake's leadership was so good that if you watch the body camera video, it looks like they train together every day. So training works and the procedures that needed to need to be in place um, are now pretty universal through a system called ALERT. It's a, a active shooter response type training. Um, school resource officers are trained in this. Police officers are trained. Homeland Security agents in Tennessee are, are trained in this response. Um, we believe that uh, that's a key part of school security, but much more important, I think, uh, or just as important as the response is not waiting until the danger is at the doorstep. We, as I, stated in my written testimony about the, uh, 90, the, the averted school attack study, we hear a lot of information about a planned school attack. Um, we must go out and confront that threat and determine whether there is capability and intent before it ends up on the doorstep of the school. Let's see, recently came to the state and did a little bit of training. Was that helpful? Do you know about their trip to Tennessee and what they did? Um, I do not, Mr. Chairman. I'm not familiar with that particular trip. I think they may have worked with uh, uh, THP on that. Um, thank you. Uh, I, Mr. Mr. Bullock, um, you, you described the impact of budgets, and budget cuts, and the mass shortage of officers. What's the impact on the other officers on the force, you know, stress-wise, uh, you know, marriages, things like that, um, for these huge shortages of, of personnel? It, it takes a tremendous mental toll on officers. Uh, just as an example, because of the severe shortages that we are experiencing, officers who are assigned as a detective that should be investigating major crimes like homicides, robberies, things of that nature, are having to work patrol shifts. So they are being sent back to patrol wow. and are diverted away from their assigned duties as an investigator in order to take 911 calls. And so they're having to do that on a regular rotation basis each quarter. So that does have a, a significant impact, as you mentioned, on mental health. It has an impact on family life. It adds another layer of unpredictability to an already unpredictable job. So we do see an increase in officers who may have issues at home that may deal with you know, alcohol use, a variety of other things that come as a result of increased stress. What about the rhetoric sort of that the, there's been, it's, it's died down a little bit, but you know, over the maybe a year or two ago, this whole deep, you know, defund the police thing, how, how has that impacted morale of the, of the force down at the, at the, as we'd say in the Army soldier level, but at the officer level? Yes, for, as you put it, kind of for the boots on the ground, it's a, it has a pretty devastating impact as well because you feel like you are not valued for what you're being asked. You're, you're asked to be willing to give of your life in the defense of others and those who are responsible for providing resources to do the job you're being asked to do are seemingly pushing you to uh, an invaluable role. So from that, that aspect, it does have an impact as well. And I, I will say even though we have seen to a degree some of those funds restored, uh, we do see some 
shell games that get played with that nonetheless, where the funding may seemingly be restored, but yet it's a responsibility that wasn't necessarily given back to the department. And so we're given, we're given the funds back, but it's not actually going to areas where we need mm. it to go in order to recruit, retain, and provide the resources for officers to do their job. Thank you.